This conference will now be recorded. I have a question. Right. So uh, now that we are preparing, I mean, since this is a preparatory course and the exam that's in May, are there two exams or only one exam? There will be one exam. Yeah. Oh, this is there the one be. that we're preparing for, right? Right. Okay. Okay. All right. I again give you the introduction for the exam. This is a CPHR exam. Uh, Data Professional Human Resource that happens to be same in across the Canada on the same day. So now it's online and you will have the objective type of questions in that and there will be three hours of exam. And there will be 160 questions in that. Right. So out of 160, 150 will be scorable. Uh, 10 questions will be experimental that we, you will not uh, that will not be scored. Uh, you don't know which kind of question will be. You have to uh, check every you have to answer every question. Uh, question. There is no negative marking in that, and uh, your syllabus will consist of your 40% of the strategy, 20% of the total rewards, 20% of the compensation. This is how it works. Uh, there, 15% to 25% that will vary. So, uh, labor relations, uh, total rewards. These are very important lectures. The HR matrix, like uh, the laws. So once you clear your exam, then you will get your digital certificate for that. After that, you will be eligible for the from S S S C P or C P. There will be a small uh, uh, test in that. That will be around 45 minutes of your uh, uh, study material will be there. That will link that, that will be given to you. So in fact, uh, with the C P H R, you will have the two certifications like the N K E uh, C P H R and your from S C P and C P according to the experience uh, which you have gained. So to retain your uh, CPHR certification, you must uh, have the 60 PDC. That is the professional development credit credits uh, that you have to submit for within three years. Like uh, you can attend the webinar, you can attend the seminar, you can write your uh, any papers, articles. So that will carry your credits in that. So if you have you are attended your trainings in your company, also that uh, that can be also submitted. That the professional development credits. That must be uh, submitted to the uh, CPHR and to the SHRAM also. So exam is for the lifetime. So any other question regarding the NK exam, uh, in 2020 the examination will be on uh, 29th May. That would be there. So any question about uh, your uh, an inquiry about your CPHR exam? You can ask. No, me. not not as of now. But yeah, I think once if I have any, I'd write to you. Okay. Okay. So we'll start with the course like the challenges for the human resource management. So there are certain kind of challenges that would be there. So uh, objectives after studying this chapter, you will be able to like you're identifying how the firms gain their sustainable competitive advantage to the people. And you explain how the globalization is influencing the human resource management and describing the impact of IT on the managing the people. Then your identification of the model uh, important of the change management uh, straight the HR's role in developing the intellectual capital then differentiate how the TQM and reengineering influence the HR system. All the terminology for the uh, TQM reengineering human capital HRM uh, human resource information system. These will these are important from the examination point of prospectors. Then uh, you'll be able to understand like the discuss the cost of HR pressure uh, cost pressure on the HR policies like the metrics you need to understand hr analytics you have to understand and discuss the primary uh, demographic and employee concern pertaining to the hrm then to provide the example of the role and competencies of the today's hr manager so human resource management if you see the definition you from the ages we are studying from your colleges human resource management what is human resource management but the examination point of view you will uh, this is important definition because there will be difference of the strategic hrm and hrm Sometimes the people confuse in the examination that what you do right or did the international global uh, global HRM or what? So HRM is the process of managing the human uh, resources and resources you include your capital and your intellectual assets. So to achieve the organization objective, this is the human resource management. Then you have the why you are going for the strategy uh, from the HRM because this staffing the organization, designing the jobs, teams, developing the skill, full employees and uh, Identification approaches for improving their performance, rewarding the employee success, all typically labeled as the HRM issue. 
and they are relevant to the line manager as so they are manager in the hr department the competitive advantage through people if you see core competencies this uh, definition also becomes important from your examination point of view what is the competencies what is the skills so competencies these are the integrated knowledge sets within the organization that distinguish from the it's a competitor to deliver the value to the customer like it is the competitive advantage that the, that distinguish you from the competitors and this is the core competency there is a difference of core competency and the competency core competency distinguish you from the competitor that is the main uh, uh difference of the core competency and competency that delivers values to the customer so and it is sustained through the competitive advantage through people if it if it is achieved through the human resources like delivering value to the customer also comes under part of the total quality management then you will see that when you will study the total quality management so you have the competitive advantage if you have the value or if you have the uh, the your people are rare and the products are rare and unavailable to the competitors and they are difficult to imitate and they are organized for synergy this is the overall framework for the human resource management if you see uh, what affects the hrm uh, it is through the globalization it is through the uh, competitive challenges there are that affects the global, uh, human resource management what exactly so here competitive challenges are there that affect your human resource management and employee concern they also affect your human resource management how if you see the competitive challenge like due to the globalization there is a competitive challenge due to change in technology because of managing the change and the human capital and responsiveness these leads to the competitive challenges and cost containment within this uh, lowering the cost that affects your human resource management but as the employee concerns if you see the employee concerns there you have to check the background diversity age distribution gender issues job security educational level employee rights uh, policy issues so that will and your work attitude and family concern they will also affect your human resource says that will be affected in in terms of your uh, planning recruitment selection job design technology your appraisals communication composition management and labor relations so overall it is affected by the uh, challenges competitive and employee concern so if you see what are the competitive challenges in human resource management like the most pressing competitive facing issue forms are going global if the if the organization are going global then there are uh, second is the embracing the new technology like the introduction of the human uh, new software artificial intelligence and managing your change like your uh, any any kind of uh, change introduction of your new technology like uh, we have discussed so then maintain managing that human capital of the, the talent is also major challenge for the hr prospective then responding to the market needs uh, and the cost containing the cost you have to lowering your down your cost so going global uh, from the point of view if you see the globalization is one of the major challenge for the companies to sustain their growth what is globalization globalization is basically the trends opening the foreign markets to international trade and investment then there are certain kind of impacts on the globalization like your know, first impact if you see anytime anything anywhere in the market that is the globalized impact of globalization so partnership with the foreign firms then you have the lowering your trade and tariff barriers then you are uh, if you see the going global corporate social responsibility this is also important uh, responsibility of the firm to act in the best interest of the people and communities that are affected by its activities the local activities so csr is also the major challenge like it, these become the responsibility of the organization that improving the community market so that affects your local uh, activities then impact on hrm you see that there are certain kind of different uh, demographics culture laws business practices these affect on the hrm and there are certain kind of issues like your identification of capable manager and workers so you cannot differentiate you cannot identify the good workers in the organization and developing the foreign culture and for work practice that training the program and adjusting the composition plans for overseas your work the embracing your new technology like the knowledge workers like the workers whose responsibility extend beyond the physical execution of work 
to include the planning, decision making, and the problem solving that the embracing the new technology. This knowledge workers are the worker these must be retained with the organization and hr responsibility is there they must have the knowledge workers to retain and knowledge based training knowledge based training like the online instruction just in time learning via internet in companies internet internet so git becomes very important just in time you have to give everything in time and in point of the inventory also so influencing you of technology in the HRM like human resource information system. So there will be a question from the HRIS also. <clears throat> like a computerized system that provides the content, current and the accurate data for the purpose of control, decision making for the HRIS. But there are certain kind of benefits like the storing, retrieving a large quantities of data combined and reconfigure the data to create the new information. Institutionalization of the organizational knowledge, easier communication, lowering your administrative costs, increased productivity and response time. So these are the most common HR IS applications. So sometimes the question comes which due to which reason the HR IS is become important. It is the payroll that leads to the companies that HR IS uh, they must implement in their organization. Whether it's a small organization due to the payroll and benefits administration, benefit enrollment, recruiting, personal administration, training and development, and the self employee self service and manager self service. These are the certain points uh, due to which uh, companies go for the HRIS. So, when you have the HRM IT investment factor, there are the certain kind of factors you must see. Uh, like the fit of the application to the firm's employee base, ability to upgrade, uh, if the system can be upgraded or not, that is there, and increase efficiency and time saving. Compatibility with the current systems, uh, this also becomes important when you go for the uh, uh, IT. Availability of the technical support, then you have the time required to implement the train the staff member to the use of HRIS and initial and annual maintenance cost is also important. Then in the last time required training time required for the human HR and the payroll. So <clears throat> there are certain you have when you go for the managing your change, you must see what type of the changes are there or not. So reactive changes there, the changes that occur due to the external force, they already affect the performance. But reactive change, there is the proactive change. Reactive and proactive difference is that proactive the change is initiated to take the advantage to target opportunity. That is the proactive change. So that is the reactive and the proactive change. And managing change through the HR. Like the formal change management pro program help to keep um, to employ focus on the success of the business. So managing the change. So why change efforts fail? Because they are not establishing a sense of urgency or they are not creating a powerful coalition to guide the efforts. Lacking the leaders who have the vision and the lacking leaders who communicate the vision if you have the vision you must communicate in a good and not removing the obstacles to the new vision not systematically planning for and creating the short term wins then you are declaring the victory very soon not anchoring the changes in the corporate culture that is the managing the change so human uh, managing the talent or the human capital. Human capital is that the knowledge, skills, the capabilities of individuals that have economic value to the organization is the of the organization is called the human capital. When you find the question, you will have the definition. Knowledge, skills, capabilities of individuals that have economic value. This is the keyword. Economic value. The you must click on the human capital. Sometimes you get confused. It's a strategy. It's a Capital, it's a what? It's a uh, core competencies or what? That having economic value is the human capital. And valuable based uh, because capital is based on the company specific skills and is, it is gained through the long term experience and can be expanded through the development. When you are responding to the market, so 
there is a total quality management the set of principle and practices whose core ideas include the understanding customer need doing the things right time right place and striving for the continuous improvement so total quality management is the principal practices that understand the customer needs and it's a continuous improvement then you have the six sigma six sigma process to translate customer need into a set of optimal task that performed in a concerned with one another and mean they are related to one another so both have the difference it's basically customer need and it's translating your customer need to the optimal task when you have the challenge five responding to the market like reengineering hrm the fundamental rethinking radical redesign of business process to achieve the dramatic improvement in the cost quality service speed it requires that the manager create an environment for change and it depends on effective leadership and communication process and require that administrative systems be reviewed and modified containing the cost so downsizing downsizing also called a planned eliminations of job like the head counts it's a planned elimination of the head counts or it's a layoff or it is all the outsourcing and offshoring these are the important outsourcing contracting outside the organization to have a work done that formally done by by your employee, internal employees when it comes to the offshoring it is over outside the country so standing being uh, your business practices of, of sending jobs to another country is the offshoring so you have the containing the cost like the challenge six like employee leasing this um, term is also very important for employee leasing is what process of diminishing the employee who are then hired by the leasing company and then contracting with the with that company to lease back to the employee means the employee was working with your organization now you're terminated and you are given that employee to the leasing company now you are asking that company that the employee same employee should work for you that is the leasing employee leasing containing cost challenge number six is the hidden cost of layoff there are the revolving door so recruitment cost hurry hiring cost severance cost there are the crude vacation and the sick uh, day payouts then is the pension and other benefit you have to pay you have the potential lawsuits that is also from the greed workers is also the loss uh, well, from the organization or to the organization the loss of institutional memory and the trust in the management then is the lack of staffers when the economy rebounds and survivor who are at the risk of worse paranoid and critical uh, that is also the major these are the major costs sometimes you will have the question what are the loss during and with, uh, so when you have the layoff so there are these kind of loss or the cost you have to bear so benefits of no layoff policy is that it's a fiercely loyal and more productive workforce will be there so higher customer satisfaction will be there you have the readiness to snap back to the back to the economy and there is a recruiting edge the workers who aren't afraid to innovate knowing their jobs are safe productivity enhancement so productivity enhancement affects uh, affected by the motivation environment and ability motivation motivation is the job enrichment promotion coaching feedback and rewards environment employee empowerment environment affected by the employee uh, empowerment team support and your culture the ability ability for recruiting your ability for selection your training and development these are the these will help to improve the productivity of the organization and there are certain kind of social issues in the hrm like there are social issues like uh, changing demographics like shrinking pool of workers and level of globalization diversity retirement continual skill development outsourcing you have there are other issues like your employer and employee rights like the equal employment relations 
equal pay for equal work, equal pay for equal value, concern for privacy, privacy and ethics, legal compliance, whistleblowing, and mandated benefit that must be given. So these are the so certain kind of issues with the human resource management. Then attitude toward your work, your family. Like people need to spend time with their uh, children, with their elders. So they need their, their care and elder care. Then they must have the flex time. And job sharing can be one of the factors that uh, can lead uh, to flex time, job sharing. These are the alternates. An alternative work schedule, and job rotation, telecommunity, getting, getting, and your parental leave. So these will be, can help in solving out these problem with the uh, uh, that the person can uh, uh, take care of his family. So uh, there is a model of diversity, model of diversity in the management uh, strategy, like the valuing diversity in the workplace, culture, opportunities, and the leadership. So culture, uh, opportunity, leadership, like your uh, the culture that values like the culture organization wide image organization fosters the mutual respect organization fosters your sense of belonging differences that are accepted and corporate wide diversity training program so there is a concern for equality like the equal respect for minority group equal performance expectation from the minority group and equal rewards from the minority and majority group and equal pay and value diversity when you value diversity, there is a certain kind of opportunity like the career development promotions for of multicultural employees, like the, there is opportunity for development of new skills, preference in, to minorities, and access to the top management position. Hiring practice like the active recruitment and the hiring of the multicultural employees, including opportunity for the minorities and employment equity program. So the leadership like the management practice that take care takes all the employees seriously, recognize their capability of the employees, support all the employees, and communicate effectively with all the employees, and value the diverse group. I respect the cultural belief, needs, and the employees, and accept the non-English speaking employees. Why you want the diversity? The primary business reason for diversity management include like the better utilization of the talent, increase marketplace, understanding, enhance product creativity, breadth of understanding, increase the quality of team problem solving. So well, that's why you these are the certain kind of uh, uh, reason that diversity is required because of the different type of talent, different type of understanding problem solutions and your creativity so these are the cultural changes cultural changes affected by the employees right your concern for privacy attitude toward work and balancing your work life and the family that will affect your cultural change and there are qualities for the human resource managers like the responsibilities, your advice and counsel. So qualities of human resource management is the responsibilities. The manager must be having the responsibility in terms of service, in terms of the policy formulation and implementation. As a manager must have the employee advocacy responsibility and he must be competent enough. Like in terms of your business mastery must be there and it must be HR mastery must be there and the chain mastery must be there. And yeah, the competency, there, there must be a personal credibility. So these are the uh, terminologies which we have uh, studied in your uh, this chapter. So this will uh, come in detail in the later chapters. We can have the question round from this lecture because this was the first lecture from your uh, NK exam. So you can have the uh, question from this. Let me this conference will now be recorded. Yeah, from the question round. A on the job. Hey, on job training. Non manager, managerial, non on job training, right? Next, employee benefit uh, structure interview.
A to A. provide greater reliability. Uh, B, a, a hiring decision can be made quickly. Reliability. Structured job leads to the more reliability. Answer is A for this. Employer sponsored pension program. Uh, I think we have done this in the later chapters. Yes. Must... Yeah, we've done this. Employer sponsored, which one is the long term employee benefit to them? B. Yeah, because you tell me. Uh, it's B, defined benefit plan. Employed sponsored plan, it's more benefit to the long term. Defined contribution plan. Okay. For employer, defined contribution is the most favorable. It's okay. uh, C. Uh, if oh. it is, uh, uh, if it is the, for the employees, for employee benefit, uh, then it is the defined benefit. Clear? Okay. What is the third party? Arbitration. A arbitration. Every day, every day disputes. Uh, what is the two parties? Third party. It can be arbitration, mediation. Every day disputes. Uh, if mediation can be the best answer for this, if uh, because the third party is there, but settling the everyday disputes, every day you have the mediation. If mediation fails, then go to the arbitrator, third party. But because the question is everyday disputes, it can be done through the mediator. Right. Let's next is the which is the answer. Constructive dismissal. Uh, C. Because. Uh, it's the it's the constructive dismissal. Yeah. Right. That's a constructive. Yeah. Change in working condition. Strategy of good. Next. Job analysis. A job analysis. Yeah, because. Uh, is it need analysis? Job analysis. It's a job. Another next question. A employee wellness program. A. Right. I see. Next question. A. Yeah. Yeah. That's what what answer you are given? Qualitative. Trend analysis A. Because? Yeah, I'll go with A. Trend analysis. Ruchi and uh, Steffi, uh, Steffi, you have given the answer or not? I gave A. Still. Look, yeah. Look, if you forget, L is here, and L is here. 
I give the technique to answer uh, to L is there and L is there, right? P is there. It's a quantitative. It's a quantitative. Is a qualitative thing, right? Test. What employee benefit required by the law? Which employee benefit is required by the law? Workers' compensation. Right. Workers' compensation. Next. Bumping. Bumping A. Yeah. Because. It's a bumping. Bumping. It's a bumping, right? It's a bumping. So that was today's lecture. At least was uh, generalized. So, so we have to stop here, and uh, you can read out the chapter number one with the question. There is a first uh, one more lecture before that. There is a uh, strategies which are given uh, for the how to crack the exam. What uh, type of question will be there? So you can read out the uh, chapter, and that is a uh, challenge in human resource management. So next slide. You'll have the uh, second chapter like the strategy. It's important strategy, professional practice, employee engagement, workforce planning. So we'll repeat uh, immediately till the next month, right? So any question from this uh, chapter, please uh, you can ask me. Any inquiries related to that? No, I just want to know that uh, once we 